The production of United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur launch vehicle represents the forefront of modern aerospace manufacturing, where precision engineering, advanced materials, and state-of-the-art fabrication techniques converge to produce a structurally robust, lightweight, and high-performance launch system. Lightweight Structural Manufacturing Orthogrid Panel Formation Production begins with high-grade aluminum-lithium alloy sheets chosen for their optimal strength-to-weight ratio and resistance to cryogenic temperatures. These sheets are machined into orthogrid panels, a design that removes over two-thirds of the base material mass while preserving structural integrity through a rib configuration. The use of CNC computer numerical control milling ensures exact geometries, reducing stress concentrations, and improving fatigue life. Following machining, the panels undergo bump forming, a controlled mechanical pressing operation that imparts the necessary curvature to conform to the cylindrical structure of Vulcan's propellant tanks. This process is essential for maintaining uniform material properties and wall thickness across the tank's geometry. Surface preparation and protection, anodizing and ultrasonic inspection. Before assembly, the formed panels and other aluminum structures, such as domes and rings, are thoroughly cleaned, etched, and anodized. Anodizing thickens the natural oxide layer on aluminum, significantly increasing corrosion resistance, particularly vital for exposure to cryogenic propellants like liquid methane and liquid oxygen, LOX. The panels are then subjected to ultrasonic non-destructive testing, NDT, to identify any subsurface flaws or inclusions. Ultrasonic inspection uses high-frequency sound waves to detect discontinuities, ensuring the reliability of critical structural components before joining. Friction stir welding, advanced joining for cryogenic tanks. Five completed panels form the barrel section of the liquid methane tank, which are joined using friction stir welding, FSW. FSW is a solid state joining technique wherein a rotating tool generates frictional heat, softening the material without melting it. As the tool moves along the seam, it plastically deforms and stirs the adjoining metals into a solid state bond. Compared to conventional arc welding, FSW eliminates the need for filler materials, produces joints with superior tensile strength, minimizes residual stress and distortion, is especially suited for aluminum alloys used in cryogenic tanks. The same process is used to fabricate the LOX tank, after which the two tanks are joined using circumferential FFUW to complete the Vulcan booster stage structure. Centaur second stage construction, stretch forming and precision welding. Parallel to booster production, stainless steel gore panels are stretch formed for the Centaur upper stage. These panels are arc welded to create the curved dome structures of the LOX and LH2 tanks. The Centaur's intermediate bulkhead, a bimetallic partition separating the two cryogenic fluids, is joined to the ultra-thin walls of the stage using specialized tooling and fixturing systems that ensure precise alignment and minimal thermal distortion. Once both tanks are assembled, they are mated together to form the Centaur 5 upper stage. The propellant tanks at walls, which are as thin as a few millimeters, demand exacting tolerances and low defect manufacturing processes due to the high internal pressures and low temperatures they must endure. Final stage preparations and thermal protection. Before final integration, the 5.4 meter diameter booster is coated with spray-on foam insulation SOFI. This foam serves dual purposes. It insulates the cryogenic tanks and mitigates ice formation on the vehicle surface during fueling. After insulation, the rocket is masked and painted to provide thermal reflectivity and reduce aerodynamic heating.
twin BE4 engines developed by Blue Origin are hot fire tested individually before integration. These methane-fueled staged combustion engines produce over 500,000 pounds of thrust each and are then mated to Vulcan's thrust structure, which is protected by an ablative or actively cooled heat shield. The BE-4 and Centaur upper stage RL-10C engines utilize liquid propellant combustion, where oxidizers and fuels mix in a thrust chamber and ignite to produce high-velocity exhaust gases. The combustion chamber walls are regeneratively cooled. The cryogenic fuel is circulated through microchannels in the walls to absorb heat before entering the combustion zone, preventing thermal degradation. Traditionally, manufacturing these cooling channels involves multi-step subtractive machining and brazing, but modern engines increasingly rely on additive manufacturing, like selective laser melting, SLM. This process enables the integration of internal cooling ducts directly into the chamber design, dramatically reducing part count, assembly steps, and production time. Whereas legacy processes might take over six months to produce a single thrust chamber, SLM reduces this to under five days with lower tool wear and minimal post-processing. The construction and integration of rocket components fall under the highest levels of aerospace regulatory oversight, driven by the extreme safety requirements of human spaceflight and orbital launches. Every weld, fastener, and surface finish must meet rigorous AS9100 aerospace quality standards and pass multiple rounds of destructive and non-destructive testing. In projects like NASA's Artemis II, similar manufacturing approaches are used in creating mission-critical structures such as the Launch Vehicle Stage Adapter, LVSA. At NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, robotic friction stir welding was used to join conical segments of the LVSA. This structure facilitates stage separation between the SLS core stage and the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, ICPS, which propels the Orion capsule to lunar orbit. Conclusion, where engineering and innovation meet. The Vulcan Centaur production process is a showcase of how advanced materials, next generation manufacturing techniques, and precise quality control come together in modern rocketry. From friction stir welding and additive manufacturing to smart design choices in cooling and insulation, every step is meticulously optimized to enhance performance, safety, and cost efficiency. Um, as aerospace systems become more complex and launch, launch cadence increases, innovations in material science, digital design, and automated fabrication will continue to shape the future of space exploration. Would you like me to turn this into a narrated video script or add technical diagrams to explain friction stir welding and regenerative cooling? Northrop Grumman and the evolution of solid rocket propulsion. A scientific perspective, Northrop Grumman Corporation is a leading American multinational, multinational aerospace and defense technology firm. With a global workforce of approximately 95,000 employees and annual revenues exceeding $30 billion, the company ranks among the top defense contractors worldwide. It was placed number 101 on the Fortune 500 list in 2022 reinforcing its stature as one of the most influential players in the aerospace and military industrial complex. The company is recognized for its contribution to aerospace engineering, particularly in autonomous systems, cybersecurity, missile defense, and space propulsion technologies. Among its most groundbreaking developments in recent years is the graphite epoxy motor, GM, solid rocket booster series, culminating in the creation of the GEM 63XL, a transformative advancement in solid propulsion technology. scientific evolution of rocket propulsion systems. The development of rocket propulsion has transitioned from early black powder rockets to sophisticated solid and liquid propellant engines designed for orbital and interplanetary missions. Solid rocket boosters, SRBs, are especially valued for their mechanical simplicity, instantaneous thrust, and high reliability. 
Historically, solid propulsion has been indispensable in launch vehicles such as NASA's Space Shuttle SRBs and the Atlas and Delta rocket families. Solid boosters act as strap-on motors, augmenting the lift capability of core liquid-fueled stages. These boosters provide a high-thrust, fixed-burn profile and are engineered to ignite simultaneously with the core stage. The graphite epoxy motor, M family. Materials, chemistry, and engineering. Northrop Grumman's GM series was introduced in the late 1980s by Thiokol Corporation, which later became part of Northrop Grumman through acquisitions. GM boosters utilize carbon fiber reinforced polymer, CFRP, casings, and a propellant blend of hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene, HTPB, as a binder, combined with ammonium perchlorate, AP, as the oxidizer and aluminum powder as fuel. This composite propellant formulation offers high specific impulse, 262 to 270S, excellent mechanical integrity under extreme vibration and acceleration long-term storability and reduced aging compared to earlier double base propellants. The composite casing gives GM motors their characteristic high strength to weight ratio, allowing them to be lighter while withstanding extreme internal pressures exceeding 900 PSI, 6.2 metapecan during combustion. GEM 63XL, breakthrough in monolithic solid rocket technology, Unveiled in 2023 and first flown aboard the Vulcan Centaur launch vehicle on January 8, 2024, the GEM 63XL is the largest monolithic solid rocket booster ever developed. Monolithic refers to its single-piece composite casing, which eliminates joints or segments traditionally used in large boosters such as those on the space shuttle. Hashersh key technical specifications. Diameter. 63 inches, 1.6 meters, length 66 to 72 feet, 20, 22, 2 meters, weight loaded over 117,000 pounds, 53,170 kilorust, 463,000 pounds, 2.06 menen. Burn time, 90 seconds. Propellant mass, 97,000 pounds, 44,000 kilograms. When paired in multiples on the United Launch Alliance, ULA, Vulcan Centaur, a set of six GEM 63XL boosters can generate over 3.3 million pounds of total thrust, rivaling the initial thrust of the Saturn V's F1 engines used during the Apollo era. The GEM 63XL embodies several key trends shaping the future of space launch systems. 1. Modularity. GEM boosters can be tailored to various launch configurations, 2 to 6 per rocket, offering scalability for payload mass optimization. 2. Affordability. Standardized design and bulk manufacturing reduce unit costs essential for competitive commercial launches. 3. Sustainability. Composite materials and virtual prototyping minimize waste and material usage. 4. Commercial military synergy. Technologies developed for GEM 63XL are applicable to both civil launch vehicles and defense missile systems, offering strategic dual use benefits. Conclusion A new paradigm in solid propulsion. The GEM 63XL solid rocket booster represents a landmark advancement in propulsion engineering. Through innovations in material science, digital engineering, and aerospace integration, Northrop Grumman has set a new benchmark for solid propulsion systems. Its unmatched combination of structural simplicity, high thrust to weight ratio, and operational flexibility ensures it will remain a cornerstone of next generation space launch vehicles. As space exploration enters an era of renewed intensity, driven by commercial satellite constellations, lunar missions, and interplanetary exploration, boosters like the GEM 63XL are poised to play a pivotal role in lifting humanity's ambitions beyond Earth.